Terus decided to uh, punish him and during the, the, the judgment in the court many many Frenchmen stood outside and said kill the Jews the death to the Jews and the, it was actually against all Jews now when Theodor Herzl saw it he was so shocked that then it was only then that he thought wow we the Jews cannot have any redemption in Europe or other places. We must go back to Zion. That's what I told you in the morning. Zionism. 
he became a Zionist. The only place where we can solve our uh, problem is in our land, back in Zion. So he became a Zionist, but he founded a new trend in Zionism, and it was the political Zionism, which meant we have to get permission from all the nations to come back to our country. In order to do it, he started going to visit and talk to all the big powers, the Sultan in, Tur in Turkey, uh, the British uh, rulers, uh, uh, the French, uh, everybody. In the end, he went <coughs> even to the Pope. And you know, when you come to the Pope, you have to kiss his hand and you have to bow, even though he didn't do all that. And then he said to the Pope what he wanted to get, uh, that the Pope will support the Jewish return, the Vatican, and we don't recognize you. So therefore, he was very disappointed. Then he decided to make a congress, a congress to congregate all the Jews from delegations from all the world to come and meet in, uh, in, uh, in Schweiz, and he in Basel, and he arranged the whole thing. And this, my dear friends, became the first, first, first unification of Jews from all over the world and working together in order to come back to the uh, land of Israel. This Congress later on was every year and Theodor Herzl wrote a book, he called the book Old New Land, Alt Neu Land. And it is so surprising because the book was pre uh, written in 1980, uh, uh, 90-something, but Think about it, in the book he wrote that in 50 years there will be a fantastic flourishing Jewish state in Eretz Israel if the Jews will come back and will do this and that and that. He talks about how they will organize the land and flourish it and blossom it and make a lot of commerce and uh, make everybody rich and so on and so forth. Now he died very young, 44 he was when he died. So he never saw what uh, happened. And think about it, 50 years after, in 1948, a Jewish state was founded. And this is a miracle. So this is why we call Theodor Herzl the visioner of the Jewish state. And he is his picture is in the Parliament of Israel, behind the speaker. Theodor Herzl. Now Theodor Herzl died and he was buried in uh, Austria. But then he asked in his will that his bones will be taken to Israel. Uh, Israel, when in 1951, brought his bones in a very beautiful official ceremony. And then he was buried just in front of you. You see there is a mountain where the, the train was just going. In front of us is a mountain. The mountain's name is Herzl's Mountain. And he is buried there in a beautiful garden. And all the important people of Israel, presidents, prime ministers, uh, others, you know, in, that have done something in this country politically and otherwise, they're buried here. Also Rabin that was murdered, it's Chag Rabin, the, the prime minister that was murdered, is also buried here. Every year, on the eve of the Day of Independence, all the ceremonies uh, and the festivities begin here, near Theodor Herzl's grave. So the mountain's name is Herzl's mountain. The mountain is parted into two. Straight ahead of us is the area, half of it is a cemetery. It is both cemetery for those people, like the president, but it is also a military cemetery. For all the soldiers of Jerusalem and the surroundings that were killed in the wars, they're being buried here. In uh, on Mount Herzl, and in the other half, the other half of the mountain is dedicated to the Holocaust Museum where we are going now. Okay, now the Holocaust Museum is the biggest Holocaust Museum in the world, and it is parted into uh, 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 five uh, departments. Departments, I don't know if I can say the parts. You see, military cemetery here to the right. Uh, in, inside there is a, a museum that we are going to visit with all the film, the documents, uh, the papers, everything that we collected after the Holocaust is presented there. 
and uh, it is presented in a special way uh, which is uh, like going like through a labyrinth. You walk through a labyrinth and you have to walk through all the parts, you see, like that. And there on the walls you will see maybe projections, uh, some papers, uh, some uh, inscriptions, some letters, some things that tell about uh, destruction, some burning, some uh, evacuations and so on. When we shall go through this, I, I, use, I tell you this in the past while it is uh, easier for you to hear. When we walk there, I'll give you time, we start the tour together near one of the trees that I'll explain about and then we shall walk up to the children's memorial and I'll explain it and we walk through the memorial then we go to see uh, something else then I go down with you to the uh, boulevard of the righteous as we call them the righteous are the non-Jews that help Jews under the war hit them, give them food, uh, whatever when it was very dangerous for non-Jews to do it and the, the, right, the, 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 the state of Israel decided to give righteous people a kind of a status in Israel of honor and also support, economical support if they were old people or so, they got money from Israel during all their life. Uh, like I have to pay the entrance. Like if I can say she mentioned the name, the book. Wait. I said is uh, we shall see the Boulevard of Righteous and then I'll give you time to walk through the museum. I'll walk with you but you will look for yourself. Somebody uh, somebody wants to see a film, somebody wants to read, somebody, whatever you want, we shall fix time and we will meet outside. All right? And then we shall uh, go with the elevator up to the last place we shall see here and that is the, uh, the, the it's a kind of a, a synagogue in, in uh, mem memory of all the Jews that were annihilated and the concentration camps. So that will be the end of the uh, visit here. Efa ta moridoti? Nama ko kakarko? Toh, we shall leave the bus. Now listen guys, leave your machines here in the bus on your seats because otherwise they will begin to make problems for me. You come with machines, you are going to talk. I'm not allowed to guide here, <coughs> other than those places that I mentioned. Inside the, the music. Where Messiah says in uh, the Ezekiel, sorry. No, no, Messiah. He said in, uh, uh, in one of the prophecies, and I will, he tells the Israelites that they will be punished and all the terrible things because they don't listen to God, but God will not annihilate them completely. He will in the end uh, bring them back and he will give them a hand and a name better than daughters and sons. Or well, their sons of daughters and daughters. Uh, what is a hand and a name? Continuation. So this why, this is why four years after the Holocaust was finished, we uh, founded this country. It's unbelievable, right? So they chose this to call it Yad Vashem, that this is the realization of the, the, of the prophecy of Ezekiel. And they also cite from Ezekiel here on the entrance wall, and, we, and I will give you from my uh, power and soul, and you will leave, and I will put you back on your uh, land. And it is from Ezekiel uh, 37, 14 verse.
And uh, there is only one nation that got such a dream in Hashem, and this is the Danish people. You know that the Danes did not allow uh, the Nazis to uh, kill the Jews. There were about 8,000 Jews in Denmark. They took them all in fisher boats and moved them over to Sweden. So that is why we always learn in school that the Danish nation, and I think also their king who is going to the Star of David, because you know that when Hitler came to power, it was needed for the Jews to carry the Star of David uh, uh, to show that he is a Jew. Now you know that this kind of thing to put a Star of David, it was actually a, an Italian invention from the 16th century because the Italians were the first in the 16th century to move the Jews out to tell them live in a ghetto. The word ghetto comes from ghetto in, in Italian. And Nitro just did the same way. Okay? So only Denmark got such a dream and also the king in Denmark at the time, he got also a dream for himself. Otherwise it is only private people who have from Poland and Commemorating fantastic people is a carol tree. And you see the carol fruit candy. This is a sweet food that is eatable. People that don't like chocolate for the children, they buy carol, uh, you know, face. And that is instead of. And the interesting thing about the carob is when you break it, you, you find the seed. The seeds can be very different in form. They always weigh the same. And you know the word karat. I bought a carrot of gold or a carrot of diamond. Carrot is the weight of a seed of this tree, of karut. It's a contortion of the word karut. And they knew in ancient times. And he took care of orphan Jewish children. He loved very much children and he wrote books about pedagogy. How do you treat children that don't have parents and things like that. He was also a very popular journalist and he was broadcasting in the Polish radio in Poland uh, uh, and then started the Holocaust. The Nazis allowed him to continue. I'm, I'm, to, I'm, I'm running before. He was this head of school and then one day the Nazis come to him and they tell him that they want to uh, take or evacuate all the children on Saturday. <coughs> it was to send them to annihilation. So he said to the children, and he, they say to him, you can continue your job and you can continue your uh, broadcasting in the radio because he was very popular in Poland. And they didn't want to do it to him yet. But he came uh, and he said to the children, children, you take your best clothes. We go on a tour. And they all were taken in cars where, you know, the exhaust was put in and they were all killed. He too, he too. So therefore, after the war, uh, he became very famous about this thing. And here in the uh, Holocaust Museum, Yad Vashem, they made a little memorial to Janusz Korczak and his uh, love for the children.